I had a dream last night. Oh my God. Well, it wasn't so much of a dream. It was more of a nightmare. Oh, you see, I had this funny notion and I turned on the television in the dream, you understand. Not real, not likely to ever happen, you understand, of course. And there was a, a person on the television telling me that there was a huge run on the banks. Oh my, I thought, what does that mean? Suddenly inflation had got out of control. All the food prices had gone up beyond the, the ability of anybody to afford. The people's houses were being repossessed because of this inflationary situation. And in my house it was, oh no, a financial crisis. And the banks were being closed down and the, all our money was going to be transferred into a new system. Don't worry, they said. It's perfectly fine. All your savings, if you've got £5,000, £10,000, £100,000, whatever it was, don't panic. You won't lose the money because we're introducing something called, now let me get this right, central bank digital currency. Oh, that sounds better, doesn't it? That sounds better than horrible old cash that you've got to carry about or having a wallet, a physical wallet, which you carry with notes that say on it, I promise to pay the bearer on demand. And it's all sign of a bit wishy-washy, isn't it? Mind you, of course, cash did have its advantages. You could buy something there and then. You didn't have to rely on any digital stuff. If the, if the electricity went down or whatever, you could just actually physically have something that represents your money and there it is. Nobody can get involved with it because cash is king and we need to use more cash. And I, I bought some eggs from Joe and Joe says, yeah, no problem. Nobody else would get involved, would they? It was just me buying eggs from Joe and he sells them to me and I maybe sell him something else like, I don't know, a, a watch. Have a watch, Joe. It's a very nice watch. Yes, it's perfectly timed. Whatever. That seems perfectly nice. Actually, I quite like cash very much. Mind you, if I was to use my debit card or a credit card, I don't actually have a credit card, but a debit card, they both work pretty much the same way. It's all about having debt, isn't it, at the end of the day, or supposed credit, but it's still debt at the end of the day. But with a bit of plastic like that, it's only my bank, my personal bank, the bank that I am with, who would know anything about the transaction. So if I wanted to buy those eggs from good old Joe, say, oh, Joe, here we are, I'll give you that and you tap it or put the pin in or swipe it like in the old days. Do you remember swiping? And then you give you the eggs. Only my bank knows about that transaction. And as I understand it, they have to keep that private because it's between me and and the bank nobody else need know. Now, there is a central bank, and from what I also gather is that the transactions that happen right across the country with people and their little debit cards and their credit cards, it's all happened millions of times in the day. At the end of the day, all those transactions are fed through the central bank so they know how much money has gone up and down but they have no knowledge of who actually has been buying what at any one place, which is a fairly safe sort of system, it seems to me, because only my bank would know, and only in extreme circumstances would they have to say, actually, we can't give you the money because we think your card has perhaps been stolen, which is obviously a good thing if, if you can say, oh, no, actually, I'm just buying something a bit unusual, but thank you very much for being concerned, but can I buy it? Is it all right if I use that because I've identified myself and basically you have to let me, oh yeah, that's great. That's cool. But in my dream, no, 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 this, all that system had been gone. We'd been told categorically we were on this central bank digital currency. Now, that seems to be, as I mentioned, a convenience because you could have it on your phone, you could have it on perhaps a watch, which you just go like this, or even better, you could have a little chip implant perhaps in your hand or in your head and you just nod to it and it will make sure that your transaction happened. But as I started to think about this, what this central bank digital currency was doing was not taking all those transactions at the end of the day and putting them through the system where you don't know who's bought what or whatever. It goes straight to the central bank. In fact, my bank is pretty much out of the picture altogether. Quite what their role would be in it, I don't know, because it being a central bank digital currency, the moment I make a purchase, the central bank would make a note of it there and then. 
which would mean, of course, that they would know exactly what I bought, where, where I bought it, how much I bought it for. Uh, they could obviously track everything about me, which made me feel, in my dream, of course, as you'll understand, can't possibly happen, can it? At least I hope not. They would know everything about me, every little purchase. Of course, it would also mean that they would be able to influence what I buy. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, it, in my dream, let's say, for example, we all had to go into another lockdown. Let's say there was another pandemic and, and all of a sudden everybody had to be locked down. Well, they wouldn't actually physically have to say you'd be locked down. They could make it very difficult for you to travel about because let's face it the last lockdown I don't think anybody would really want to go through that period again but the central bank because all your money is going through this central bank that you have no idea who is there and who's looking at your money and the, the transactions that you're doing they could turn around and say do you know what actually we may need to restrict people because of the pandemic so actually your bank mechanism will only work within, let's say, one or two miles of your house. You wouldn't be able to buy, say, enough petrol to travel any further. Or you wouldn't necessarily be able to buy food in another another district or even another country. Perhaps you would they would restrict you from getting onto an aeroplane or having a ticket that would take you further up the, the country or anything like that. So that they could, you know, if the government needed to, restrict everything about you, which is interesting because then that sort of takes away your autonomy to your own money, which would be a bit of a worry. They could even restrict you, let's say, to, I don't know, a 15 minute surrounding circumference of where you live. Hmm, I seem to have heard something about 15 minutes and the limitations of where you go. So then that made me think, what is this money really about? If it's not like cash where you can just have it wherever you are and buy something or sell something and you've got to go through this bank, this central bank digital currency in which they could potentially restrict what you do, it suddenly struck me that actually this isn't money in the old fashioned way that we understand it. It's more like permissions. It's more like the central bank and whoever is nosing into your account is giving you permission to purchase these items, permission to have enough petrol to go wherever you damn well like, permission to eat whatever kind of food you like if you don't fancy a load of bugs and horrible processed food but want something organic or something nice, they might be the ones that are giving you permission because they can restrict what you buy. So these aren't real money in the true sense, it's permission. Whereas, as I say, with cash, it's a private transaction. Well, of course, you can imagine I woke up with a, a muck sweat thinking, oh my God, can you imagine such a crazy system? And then I thought, no, of course, the benevolent and kind government who have our best interests at heart would never never introduce a system in which they could control us with permission money. No, it couldn't possibly happen. At least, I don't think so. Although, we have had a number of very strange things coming in down the line that many of us haven't asked for, haven't voted for, haven't given the government a mandate for. So I wonder whether the government could actually implement a system in which they give us permission to buy the things that we want. And if that was the case, what kind of government does that make them in a supposed democratic society.